I'm juggling college textbooks by day and Uber Eats deliveries by night. It's not the dream college job, but it pays for my expenses. I usually stick to the campus in nearby neighborhoods, places where the worst you'd expect is a lousy tip or a dog chasing you back to your car. One Saturday night, I'm about to call it quits when my phone pings with the delivery out to the fringes of the city. It's late, sure, but one more delivery means extra cash, so I accepted it. The place is one of those apartment complexes that seem better days, sitting in a part of town where folks have more locks on their doors and less trust in their eyes. I pull into the parking lot, which is more cracks and potholes than actual pavement. There's a guy wandering around like he's lost or looking for trouble. He's got his hoodie pulled up and his hands buried deep inside his pockets. I do my best to ignore him, lock my car with a quick beep, and head inside. The lobby was empty except for the hum of an old vending machine and the flicker of a dying light bulb. I took the elevator up, trying not to think about the guy outside. Fourth floor, the doors open and I'm down the hall to apartment 4D. The guy who answers is chill, just happy to get his late night grub. He gives me a tip that's more generous than usual around here. I thank him and head back to the elevator, feeling a little better about this last run. But then I hear it. Footsteps. I glance back and there's the hoodie guy. Closer now. I'm thinking, great, what does he want? I pick up the pace, hit the elevator button a bunch of times, but it doesn't move fast enough. He's right on me now, and I can smell the booze on his breath as he asks for cash. I tell him I've got nothing, but he's not buying it. He shoves me against the wall, and I feel something sharp against my neck. Wallet and phone, he demands. I hand them over, hoping that's the end of it. But then, he lunges at me with whatever sharp thing he's got. I dodge just in time, and his weapon clatters to the floor. Now it's fight or flight, and I'm not about to let this guy get the best of me. We're wrestling on the ground, and it's nothing like the movies. It's clumsy, it's desperate, and it's scary as hell. But somehow, I get the upper hand and pin him down. The noise must have alerted the neighbors nearby, because the next thing I know, the cops are here, and I'm giving them the whole story. Turns out this guy's a known burglar in the area. The cops are calling me a hero, but I'm just glad it's over. I walk away with a new sense of pride, sure, but there's also a clear lesson. No more late night deliveries in places that give me a bad vibe. It's just not worth the risk. After that night, things changed for me. I couldn't shake off the feeling of those few terrifying minutes that seemed to stretch on forever. Every shadow in my apartment made me jump. Every unexpected noise had me on edge. I kept replaying that moment in my head, wondering if I could have done something different, something better. The next few days at school were a blur. I went through the motions attending classes, nodding along to the lectures. But my mind was stuck in that hallway with the flickering lights and the cold press of metal against my throat. Friends asked if I was okay, and I'd just give them a half smile and nod. Yeah, just tired I'd say. But sleep was the last thing I was getting. I thought about quitting Uber Eats for good, but it wasn't like the job was my career path. I was studying to be an architect, not a delivery guy. But then there was also the tip money, which was nothing to sneeze at, especially for a college kid. And there was a part of me, a stubborn part, that didn't want to let one bad night scare me off the streets I'd come to know. So I actually kept at it, but with new rules. No more late night deliveries, nothing past 9pm. Definitely nothing outside of the areas I knew well. So I started carrying pepper spray too, just in case. I wasn't going to be caught off guard again. A week later, I'm back on the road, the hum of my car's engine a familiar comfort. I stick to student areas, places where the biggest worry is a frat boy prank, 
or a parking ticket. The night's going smooth, and I'm starting to feel like myself again. Then, my phone pings. It's a delivery request, and without thinking, I accept. It's only when the address pops up that I realize it's the same complex from that night. My heart skips a beat, and for a second I consider cancelling. But it's only 8pm. Still light out, and I tell myself I'm being paranoid. I can do this. I'm not gonna let fear run my life. I pull up to the complex, and it's like deja vu. The parking lot's still a mess, but there's no sign of the hoodie guy, or anyone else for that matter. I lock my car, take a deep breath, and head inside. The lobby's empty again, and the elevator's working in my favor this time. I get to the fourth floor without a hitch, deliver the food to a group of giggling college girls having a movie night, and head back to the elevator feeling silly for being so nervous. That's when I hear it, a shout from down the hall. It's not at me, but it's enough to get my adrenaline going. I start jogging to the elevator, hit the button and wait. The shouting gets more louder, more frantic, and I'm about to bolt down the stairs when the elevator dings open. And I'm about to step in when I see her, a woman, maybe in her 30s, running towards me. She's panicked, out of breath, and there's fear in her eyes. Please help, she gasps. My boyfriend. He's... I need to get out of here. Now I'm no hero, I'm just a college kid who's had one too many close calls, but I can just leave her there. So I pull her into the elevator, hit the ground button and watch the doors close on the fourth floor and whatever the hell she's running from. We get to the lobby and I can tell she's scared to go outside, so I offer to drive her to her friend's place. She accepts with a nod and we're back in my car driving away from the complex as she tells me about the fight she had with her boyfriend how it got out of hand, and how she just needs to get away. I drop her off, make sure she's safe, and then it's just me and the road again. I let out a long breath, feeling like I've dodged another bullet, literally and figuratively, and then I decide right then and there, no more deliveries to that complex, and no more exceptions to my rules. I keep driving for Uber Eats, but I'm more careful now, I listen to my gut and I stick to what I know. And every time I pass that complex, I remember the night I could have been a statistic, and the night I decided I wasn't gonna let fear dictate my life. Junior year of college was supposed to be about hitting the books and maybe hitting a few parties, Instead, it hit me with an experience straight out of a horror flick. I was driving for DoorDash, a gig that had me navigating the sleepy streets of suburbia, delivering everything from burgers to sushi to folks who preferred their meals come to them. It was a typical Thursday night, the kind where the evening had settled into comfortable silence, punctuated only by the occasional bark of a dog or the whisper of leaves in the breeze. My deliveries had been run of the mill, the interactions brief and forgettable. That is, until I turned onto a street, where the houses got progressively larger and the lawns looked like they were combed with a fine toothed comb. The GPS chimed, signaling my arrival at a sprawling estate that looked like it belonged in a movie about old money and family secrets. The house was a beacon of light in the otherwise dim street, and there, on the porch stood a woman. She was waving at me quite energetically. I parked my car, the gravel driveway, crunching under the tires like I was stepping on a trail of popcorn. The gates looked like they were wrought iron and looked like they cost more than my tuition. And as I approached, the woman's features came into focus. She was attractive, the kind of ageless beauty you'd find in skincare commercials with long dark hair that fell in waves over her shoulders. Hi, I'm with DoorDash, I said, lifting the bag as if I needed proof. Oh, thank goodness you're here, she said, her voice a cocktail of relief and something else I couldn't quite place. I've been waiting. Please, come inside, I'll get you paid, 
and you can set the food down in the kitchen. Now, I'm not one to ignore red flags, but this situation was flapping with them like a car dealership on a windy day. But my curiosity always had a bad habit of grabbing the steering wheel, and tonight was no exception. I followed her into the house, the door closing behind us with a click that sounded a little too much like a lock snapping into place. The interior of the house was a showcase of wealth and taste. The kind of place where the couches are never sat on, and the chandeliers have more crystals than a new age bookstore. You have a beautiful home, I said, because what else do you say when you're standing in a museum that someone lives in? She thanked me with a smile that didn't quite reach her eyes, and led me through a maze of hallways adorned with paintings that watched me a little too closely. We arrived at a kitchen that was stainless steel and marble, and I set the food down on an island the size of my dorm room. She was rummaging in her designer purse now, pulling out a wad of cash that would make a bank teller blush. But as she handed it to me, she stepped into my personal space, close enough that I could count the diamonds in her earrings. Is everything okay? she asked, her tone dropping to a husky whisper that felt like it was wrapping around me. Yeah, just, you know, Long night, I stammered, taking a long step back and finding my escape route blocked by a bar stool that cost more than my car's down payment. She moved closer, her perfume enveloping me, a scent that was probably bottled in a place where the rain only falls in a perfect drizzle. I just... I just feel like we have a connection, she said, her hand reaching out to touch my arm. Don't you feel it too? My heart wasn't just racing right now, it was full on sprinting. I grabbed the money, mumbling some excuse about having to get back on the road, but when I tried to leave, her grip on my arm was ironclad. Please don't go, she pleaded, her eyes wide with the desperation that sent a shiver down my spine. I pulled away with more force than I intended, the room suddenly feeling as cold as the marble beneath my feet. I need to leave. I said, my voice barely hiding the panic. She didn't let go. Instead, she pulled me in, her lips parting in anticipation of a kiss I had no intention of sharing. It was then that I realized I wasn't just uncomfortable, I was in danger. With a twist and a shove, I broke free, my heart hammering against my ribs as I made a beeline for the door. But she was faster than she looked. She tackled me with the grace of a linebacker, and my head connected with the wall, a burst of pain exploding behind my eyes. Dazed, I scrambled to my feet, the world tilting on its axis. I could hear her footsteps, a staccato rhythm of madness, as she chased after me. I stumbled through the hallway, the portraits blurring into a judgmental audience to my escape. I burst through the front door, gasping for air that felt like freedom. A police car was cruising by, a guardian angel in blue and red. I waved my arms, my voice raw as I shouted for help. The officer, a young guy who looked like he'd seen his fair share of domestic disputes, pulled over. I poured out my story between having breaths, the adrenaline turning my wards into a waterfall of fear and confusion. He radioed for backup and went inside, his hand resting on the taser at his belt. When he came back out, his face was grim. The woman had a history, a string of incidents with delivery drivers who'd been lured in with smiles and left with nightmares. I sat in my car, watching the flashlights paint the night, and made a silent vow. No more house calls. No more stepping over the threshold into the unknown. I was a delivery guy, not a people pleaser, and from now on, I'd keep my deliveries only to the doorstep. Friday nights used to be about hanging out with friends or catching a movie. But in my sophomore year of college, they were all about making some extra cash with Uber Eats. Every delivery meant a few more bucks in my pocket, and I was all for it. That night, I had just scooped up a hefty order from a restaurant on the edge of town. The sky was ink black, and the only company I had was the low hum of my car's engine and the occasional song on the radio. 
I was cruising back towards the city center when I noticed headlights in my rearview mirror. There was a car tailing me. At first, I brushed it off as a coincidence, but as I zigzagged through streets and changed lanes, the car clung onto me like a shadow, not formed in my stomach. Being followed never feels good, and this felt downright ominous. Then, the car pulled up beside me. Its windows were tinted so dark, it was like staring into the abyss. I could barely make out the silhouettes of at least two people inside. Without warning, the car jerked towards me. I slammed on the brakes, heart thudding against my ribs. I glanced over and saw the glint of a gun in the passenger's hand. Hand over your money, came the shout from the car. Panic surged through me, but I knew I had to stay sharp. I floored the accelerator, trying to put distance between us. They were relentless, matching my every move on the road. My heart was a drumbeat in my ears, my hands slick as sweat as I gripped the steering wheel. I was outmatched and scared out of my mind. Just when I thought I was done for, I saw salvation ahead. It was a police car. I gunned it towards them, hoping against hope they'd see me. The thieves were right on my tail, hurling curses and threats, but I was focused on one thing, getting to that police car. I pulled up behind the patrol car, honking like a madman. The officer snapped into attention. I skated to a stop and jumped out, my voice a frantic staccato as I explained the situation. One officer drew his gun and ordered the thieves to stop, but they weren't going down without a fight. They leaped out of their car, guns blazing. It was like a scene from a movie, gunshots, shouting, and chaos. I ducked behind my car, praying I wouldn't catch a stray bullet. The cops were pros, however. They returned fire with precision, taking control of the situation, one by one. The thieves were subdued and handcuffed. When it was all over, the adrenaline left me in a rush. I was shaking, but alive. The officers checked on me, their voices calm and reassuring. I finally made my way to drop off the food, my mind replaying the night's events over and over again. I had made a narrow escape, a brush with the real danger, and after that delivery I quit Uber Eats for good. The risk just wasn't worth it. And to anyone out there hustling like I was, stay alert and trust your gut, it may just save your life.